Hi and welcome. So now we're going to talk about how to introduce yourself in Tibetan. So normally when we introduce ourselves, we talk about our name, uh, where we're from and how old we are. So those are three things we can look at today. Uh, so <clears throat> how do I talk about my name and find out other people's names? So the word for name in Tibetan is Ming or Mingla. So let's have a look at that. Ming, Ma, Gigu, Mi, Nga, Ming, Ming, La, Ming, La. And so to say my, we say Nga, A, Gigu, I, Nge. So Nga is I and the A is like the possessive, so to me or of, of me, I suppose. My, Ming, La, Ming, ma gigumi nga ming la. Uh, Tom, let's say. Uh, let's go with ta naruto ma tom. I uh, maybe Tibetan people will spell it differently, but that's my best guess right now. And then you can use the verb sa sa oops sa, which means called declared or called so i i call my, my name is called tom naming la tom sa and then you can ask the other person just like we did with how are you so what's your name and the word for you is kerang and the word for your is kerangi so let's have a look at kerangi Ka yata kya rengu ke ta ke rang 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 in general means usually self so yourself but you don't need to say self in English kerang gi and the gi you see with this gigu here is serves the same purpose as this e for the nga a gigu i nge so we have kerangi mingla mingla your name and then the question is what so ga re kare kare is the question what and then uh, called sa kerang we'll put a she at the end since it's the end of the phrase Kerangi mingla kare sa. And then the other person would answer something similar with whatever their name is. So we could say, uh, if it's a Tibetan person, maybe. Nge. Nga agigui nge. Ma gigu mi nga ming la. Treshi. So. Uh, Pao Ga. Oh, here we'll bring this down a little bit so you can see. Oops. Pao Ga Rata Tra. Sha Gigu Shi Sa Shi. Nye Ming La Tra Shi. Sa. So my name is called Tashi, or my name is Tashi. Nye Ming La Tra Shi Sa. Then maybe you want to ask, okay, where are you from? There's a, obviously, just like in English, there are many ways to say this question. One way that's typical in Tibet itself is to talk about Lungba. Lungba is often translated as country, but literally it means valley. So like, what valley are you from? So, Kerang, you. Oops, ke ka yata kya dringbu ke ta ke ra nga rang ke rang. And then you can say, whoops, lung ba la shab chu lu nga lung ba, whoops, ba lung ba. So you, country or valley, ka ne ka 
nasa ne ka ne means like where from where from where from ka ne and then because you're asking the person and it's a personal kind of identity question you ask you ask yin yin because oops ya giku yin na yin because you're expecting them to give you a yin answer so kyeong lungba kane yin so what what is the valley that you are from or what valley are you from in english but if you break it down kyeong you Longba Valley Country, Kane, where from? And then Ying is, in this case, it's R, a personal R, if you're asking the question. But in, like I say, this Yin can be used for R, is, am, it really depends on the context. And, and the fact that the answer, it means, it's what they call egophoric. Yin means to be, but with a particular emphasis on a personal association for like identity or things like this. So the answer would be, for example, Nga, uh, I, or Ngarang, Nga, uh, let's say I'm from America. So, a uh, ma jungbu me. Ji ja gigu ji. Ka ne nasa ne yin. So, nga ai America ne from yin. I am from america so to be in this case in this when you translate it to english it would mean am i am from america Na america ne ying it's an easy way to answer this question and another way to talk about where you're from sometimes if it's a more formal situation or just different vocabulary sometimes you can ask you can use this option also payul Pa ya shabju yu la yul. Pa yul literally means like father land. Pa yul, father land. Pa yul. So we can say the question might be Kerangi ka yata. Kya rengu kye ta kye ra nga rang ka ki gu ki kirang ki is your pa you your fatherland ka oops ka ba oops ka bar which means where ri ka ba ri Kerangi Payul Kabarri. So this means Kerangi, your Payul, fatherland, Kabar, where, or in what place? Kabar, where? Re is. So this earlier yin can mean is, and this re can also mean is. And what is the difference? The re is more of a general fact. It's a uh, you're saying something that's about the place and it could be about a very personal association or it just could not be it could be you know where where were you born as a as a general fact so kyerangi payu kanei kabare kyerangi payu kabare so where is your birthplace or where is your fatherland it's another word we can look at another time. Kiesa is mm, birthplace. Uh, so, kirangi payu kabare. And then the answer would be, oh, here we'll try and show the, with the, end, the line there. 
nge or ngarangi. Nge, you could use either one. Nga, whoops, nga agigui is my, or another option is nga rang gi. This is another way to say the same thing. So nga i or nga rangi. Nga rang, this is more like if you wanted to translate it literally in English, it would be myself's, something like that, myself's, my. But it, in English, we just say my. Narangi, pa yu, my fatherland. Uh, let's say, whoops, ja, na, da, je. Narangi, pa yu, ja, na, da, je. My homeland or my fatherland is Canada, as a general fact. So we can have a look at some other countries. Uh, let's say, uh, oh, Ah, naruo, ta rata, ta rata ta, la giguli, ya. So, o, ta, li, ya. This brings up a point about difficulties that Tibetans have pronouncing certain clusters that don't exist in Tibetan. So. In English, we would say Australia, but S and T put together doesn't exist in Tibetan, so many Tibetan people have a difficult time making that the two stick together the way that they would in English. So you might hear somebody say Australia, Australia, <laughs> uh, because they it feels more natural to a Tibetan to have some kind of a vowel sound between an S and a T. Just like um, you would hear an Irish person say film instead of film. It's the same kind of principle. And then, uh, what's another country? So, Australia. It's spelled Australia. They may or may not say Australia or whatever, depending on the person. Uh, then next one uh, is going to show a new kind of spelling oddity, which is tau pa yata. Ya in this case, gigu yi na yin. So you wonder why is this not a cha turning into a chin? This is not chin. So, what you have is an exception, which has to do with the fact of there being a, a da in front of the pa. When there's a da in front of a pa, it basically erases the sound of the pa. So you're just left with the ya underneath. So all you have left is yin, yin, or yin. So this is an exception. So every time you see a ta in front of a pa, you know that the, the ta changes the pa into not being pronounced. So yin, yin, cha gigu chi, ha gigu yi. And then we can say, Lung la chapchu lu nga lung ba. So this is inji lung ba. So England's, the agigui is a, like an apostrophe s in English, serves the same purpose like you saw above. And then so England's valley or England's land, England's country, this is one way to say England.
And another uh, country that you might need to say is, uh, let's say Denmark. Da tengo te na den. And then just ma, ka, mak. So because, like I was saying, RK is a cluster that would not happen in Tibetan. So you will just hear people say Denmark unless they're from a European country and they have a typical European pronunciation or North American pronunciation. Denmark. Denmark. Uh, what's another one? Uh, oh, yes. Remember in the alphabet video, I talked about the fact that pa is also sometimes pronounced as fa so this kind of works well in this case so fa ra na ren so you note that ra normally sounds like ra when you put an n after it it doesn't sound like ran it sounds like ren it the a sound gets softened a little bit to ren ra na ren so you're going to notice that happens when you put n after uh, other other letters. So fa, ren, and then si is the way that they spell it. So friends, friends, friends. Because if you didn't have, I guess, the e on it, the sa gigusi, it would be fransa, which doesn't really make sense. So fransi. Uh, okay, then we can have uh, au ja ra jar ma na men. So you hear again this ma na men it changes the vowel sound from a to e. Jar men, jar men. So you see the ra doesn't change the vowel sound of the the ra doesn't sound the change the vowel sound of the ja. So jar. But then the ma na becomes men, jar men, jar men, so Germany. Then when you're listening to Tibetans, you will probably hear ra kata ga yata gya ga ra gar gyakar, or if you're from the eastern province, jakar, jakar. Gyakar or Jakar. You'll probably hear both. Jakar or Gyakar. India. India. Jakar. And then an easy one also. A uh, gigu i. Oops, wrong a. A gigu i. Ta. La gigu li is Italy. 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 That one matches pretty well. It's an easy enough for Tibetans to pronounce and spell. So that's an easy one. Itali. So if we go back here, we can practice a little bit. Say, uh, either this one, nga itali ne yin, nga france ne yin, nga janada ne yin, or you can say, Narangi payul itali re. Narangi payul friends re. Narangi payul German re. Those are some ideas to practice with. Now, if you want to talk about how old you are, the word for age is lo. Lo. Sometimes gung lo, but right now we're just going to look at lo. Like how many, uh, lo is like, uh, in this case, year, year. Like how many years do you have uh, is the way that you could express it in English, but that's not how we say it in English, so lo. So the question would be, kerang kaya ta kya rengu kye ta ta kye rang is you or yourself, yourself. Or literally you self, but that's we would say yourself. Lo, whoops, la naro lo. Years. Kazu ka. Tsa ta. 
normally what happens here is there's a bit of a trick in the pronunciation. Over time, it's similar to what we did earlier here, where ma, na becomes men. Here, normally, this would be ta, ta, te. So you can say katse, 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 which means how much, or literally like what amount, or what measure. What measure maybe is uh, maybe a really precise way to think about it if it helps you to think about the difference. Um, so katse, katse, but over time, people get lazy, I suppose, and so often you will hear it as katze. Kadzu, kadzu, and it kind of becomes maybe more of a schwa sound or an, even an e sound depending on the person. So, kiran lo kadzu or kadze, kadze yin. So again, we have this to be in the personal sense, like my identity. I have so many years. I am so many years old. I am so many years old because it's you, it's your identity, your personal identity. So, kiran lo kadze yin. And the answer will be nga lo. And then we'll give an example. We'll say uh, 33. We'll go into numbers in another video, but so just trust me on this one for now. Uh, it's sum. Sum, which means three. Ju. Whoops, chu, cha shep chu chu. Whoops, chu, so, gao, nya gigu ni sa ni yin. So, I, years. This is another note to keep in mind that if it's a noun, the default tends to be plural, not singular. So it's, but, and there is no easy way to mark the plural. Like you give it a number or you don't. And in general, you assume that it's plural unless you specifically say that it's singular. Although again, it depends on the context. So nga, lo, sum, chu. So sum is three and chu is 10. So the two together, sum, chu, three, 10, like in English, 30, right? 30. 30, right? 30. This two together make 30. Sumchu. So is a sound particle that goes with sum. So after sumchu, if you're going to put another number after that, you put the particle so in it, which matches with the sum. Anyway, we'll talk about that in a numbers video. Sumchu so ni. Ni is two. Two. So sumchu so ni is 30. Two. And the so we don't use in English, but if it's sort of like a, an and that only goes with the number three. Yin, so am. I am 32. I am 32. Or I suppose you could translate it literally as I have 30 and two years. Something like that. So I am 32. Again, this is gonna, you're going to encounter this question of, in English, sometimes we use the verb has, have, whereas in Tibetan they use the word am, and they are not interchangeable. It's just a different way to look at things, so don't be too um, rigid in your thinking. Just know the phrases that people normally use in Tibetan, and then just plug in the words that you want to use. That's the best approach. It's going to be the one that gets you understood and not too concerned about um, trying to translate English directly into Tibetan because that is a losing battle. You will, you will not have a happy time speaking Tibetan if you are trying to constantly translate from English. Just learn the new structure in Tibetan and use it and use it and use it just like a little kid would use it uh, to be able to communicate with other people doing the same thing. So we'll do another video about numbers. We will leave it here at this point. So I hope you found this useful and listen again if you need to.